It's exciting. Exciting when things run smooth, when we're hitting 60 loads a day or 50 loads plus. Production's what you have to look forward to, and that's why you like to see the trucks coming out. We're out there trying to protect uh, the forest from fires. We're the guardians, you might say, of the forest. My name is Steve Reedhead. I'm a logger. In fact, my great-great-grandfather actually logged in the early 1800s here in the White Mountains. Now, I used to log with a horse when I was a young man for the paper mill. But now we don't do that. It's all equipment and all computerized. Easier way to log. Back in the 80s when the environmental issues became very prevalent, that's when they didn't want you to cut any big trees, and that's where your margin of money was. And so pretty soon the industry left. I think the Rodeo Chess guy finally woke the environmentalists up, said that we can't continue not to cut trees. Good evening from the Sholo area. The fire cloud remains above us tonight. Nearly 200,000 acres have burned. As you near Sholo on Highway 60, this is the scene. Almost like a nuclear bomb has exploded. We have property that happened to be right in the path of the fire. 500,000 acres several atomic bombs worth of energy were released into the atmosphere. All of our neighbors, their homes were burned to the ground and 450 homes in Heber and Overgard burned that afternoon. And the more homework that I did, the more I realized that this was a colossal disaster from the environmental community, the logging community, and the federal management of the U.S. Forest Service lands. And that just so angered me and so upset me that I felt like I had to do something and I started the biomass business in 2005 that now is called Noble Biopower. A biomass facility is like most other fossil fuel facilities. We take wood, biomass, and we take all waste woods, grind or chip them, and then we put it into the bed of a boiler in hot boiling sand and create heat. That heat warms water, creates steam, and you turn a turbine, just like a coal plant or a natural gas plant. We generate about 27 and a half megawatts an hour. Uh, that's enough to power some 20,000 homes. That would power the homes of the White Mountains. SRP and APS buy our power. Without question, the work that we do up here prevents forest fires. That is probably one of the greatest things that we do is we take what's going to burn unnaturally, we make power, we clean up the emissions, we have economic development. The big problem is, is that there's not enough biomass operators here in Arizona. We have a few that are really making a difference in the White Mountains, like Novo Star Power. Their ability to take biomass greatly helps us do the work that we do in the woods by taking some of the small diameter material and converting it into power. There are some small operators that are converting some of it to pellets or pellet stoves to provide heat to homeowners. This is our final product. It's a quarter inch diameter wood pellet. They're used for fuel for a high-tech wood stove. We make about 3,000 truckloads of this every year. The environmental community also recognizes that without industry at the table, without private business at the table, then ecological restoration will not occur. We are in Woodland Lake Park, so it was thinned with the goal of reducing the fire danger in this community park. And you can see that the focus of the treatments were cutting smaller diameter trees and some of the unhealthy trees to make a safer park and to restore the forest. Has the partnership between the environmentalists and uh, the industry become a win-win? I completely say yes, yes, yes. You not only take out the trees that you can make logs out of, they also go into your smaller trees and thin those out so that uh, the fire does not get going. Because logging is such a tough industry, I didn't want to have any of my children to f follow suit. But with the biomass plant, I got four sons now involved in it. So there's six, seven generations. Can you bring it over there today? 
think so. Because he does uh, go there, Jeff, have him pick up the 525 and just bring it back here. People love you sometimes and people hate you sometimes. And some, some people who don't want you to cut a tree. But if you've lived in our area very long, trees need to be cut. Else, well, we, we're over a million acres now that's been burned up because we're not getting it cleaned up. I pitched. Maybe, uh. Before Dawn starts four years running, baby. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. At this time, the Forest Service is really making progress in uh, getting up the timber cells that we need in order to move forward. But to move more quickly, we need more contractors, logging contractors, more industry in order to handle the lumber and the biomass removed from the forest. And if we do not hurry and clean up the rest of the Arizona forest, we're going to lose another 500,000 acres. And that's, that's the scary part.